All right. So I started my camera in town. My camera died because these batteries are really a worth, they're worthless junk. They're little, but I mean, they're, they're even this Sony battery is not a good battery. So I've been talking to a to a camera. I actually went on the side road that cuts around the slope on the west end of Craig. It's it's a it's a hill, pretty big hill. You'll definitely feel this hill if you're on a bicycle. I used to ride my bike out this way. I don't do that anymore. Not that I'll quit doing it, but just too busy. Got more important things to do. So I took you on a bypass. I have a feeling my camera was dead at that point. I don't know where it died. But anyway, we're carrying on. We're about eight miles west of Craig right now, heading west, and I want to show you a little bit of, the, of Muffet County's big county roads that, that, that intersect the county and that take you to some really interesting places here. And I was talking about sort of, the, sort of a, a general overview of Muffet County. Muffet County is in northwest Colorado. It's roughly 110 miles east to west and maybe 60 miles north to south. Moffat County has over 11,000 miles of dirt roads in it. I think there's about 1,000 miles of paved road in Moffat County, so you can get to a lot of places at Moffat County. Of course, the roadless initiative, which if you're local, you've heard about it. If you're not local, it's people, environmentalists that want to shut old roads down, you know, for the planning, for the sake of the planning, which really basically means they want to shut oil, gas, and mineral exploration and ranching down. That's really what it means. We know that, well, those of us who think about things know that. Anyway, Moffat County has got mountains that are over 12,000 feet valleys that are are down around like maybe 4,500 feet, 4,000 feet in elevation. The Yampa River is the main river that runs through through Moffat County and it you know, comes from the east and, and goes out the southwest corner of Moffat County but not until it meanders around creating some pretty gigantic canyons. Juniper Canyon, which is, we're, we're very near that right now, is one of those canyons. And then out at Browns Park, there's some really big canyons. Can't think of the name of the canyon right now. Uh, Cross Mountain Canyon, oh yeah, that's a great canyon. There's some pretty cool rapids in Cross Mountain Canyon. Had a couple of copper prospects in the area, really old ones. There are some amazingly beautiful views out towards Dinosaur National Monument. Canyons that, I, I mean, their, their images rival like the Grand Canyon. They're that cool, it's that cool. It's not nearly as deep as the Grand Canyon, but there, it's impressive, you know. It's, it's basically a, a river-cut canyon, which most canyons are. It meets up with the Little Snake River out here. The Little Snake River comes in from the north. Sort of, the Little Snake River is sort of the border of the gold fields area of Moffat County. And the Little Snake River, uh, it runs north and south, probably about 20 miles west of us. It's kind of running north and south. Be up with the Yampa River. Pretty sure after it gets out of Cross Mountain Canyon. Yeah. And then that, those two rivers, 
Keith heading west, cut some huge canyons, huge canyons out, uh, out by Dinosaur National Monument. And the Yampa and the Green River meet up, and I think that's called Echo Park where they meet up. That's a, a really cool canyon. There are probably photographs of it. It's really neat. Rafters love going out there, and it's, it's a beautiful place. And then, of course, Dinosaur National Monument, which is pretty much on the state line. It's a little bit in Utah and a little bit in, in Colorado. And now we're getting close to the edge of the Great Basin out there, which is an area where the rivers run into it, but they don't run out. The Colorado River skirts that area, though. Runs south, it goes down, goes down um, west of Grand Junction into Moab, you know, and works it its way down through, through Arizona. And eventually, eventually, I believe it goes to Texas. Am I right about that? I think I'm thinking the Rio Grande. There are mountain environments in Moffat County. There are desert environments in Moffat County, and there's everything in between. And you, would, you wouldn't think of this country as being as being like Alaskan tundra, you know, the really cold stuff or Siberia. But in the winter, this country gets really cold. And this area that we're in is the coldest part of Moffat County, typically. Maybell was, I think it was 63 or 65 below in the 70s, but Craig was 56 below. I learned, a, I learned a scientific lesson the day that Craig was 56 below, whatever, whatever temperature it was. It was on a Monday, I'm pretty sure. I think it was in January, January or February, I believe January. But that weekend, I was a kid, I had gone out, me and my friends had gotten a hold of beer and were drinking some beer, which is kind of what you do when you're an underage kid, and I was underage. By the way, this is the town of Lay. It's actually just a, a community nowadays, but it's a pretty cool area. North of us used to be the Blevins Dredge, a gold mine, gold dredge. There's a lot of gold fields up here. And there's a lot of uranium that starts to, to be, uh, you start to find uranium out in this area. You find it everywhere, radioactive material, but the area around here and to the west was mined. There were some pretty big uh, uranium mines out here. Anyway, not to interrupt my own story, there's also a buffalo ranch out here. Usually you see some buffalo. Oh, there they are. You're not going to see them, but they're over on the south side of the road right now. Hanging out. You might have seen them. They look like... Oh, yeah, they're slip on the other side of the road, too. They're just giant. Anyway, the scientific experiment was... The question was, what happens if you freeze beer to a really, really cold temperature under pressure? And then you you release that pressure. So that was my scientific experiment. As my car was warming up, I looked in my glove box and there was a Coors Tall Boy in my glove box. I don't know how it got there, but it got there. I wasn't I was not an alcoholic when I was a kid, but I you know, I I experimented with, with alcohol. And this was one of my experiments. Apparently someone who had been in my car had put a tall boy in my glove box. So I, I took it out and I'm waiting on my car to warm up. It's extremely cold outside. So I was thinking, well, I could probably drink a beer while I'm waiting for, or, you know, waiting for my car to warm up so I can drive to school drunk. <laughs> we're, by the way, we're now on County Road 17, heading south. So that's what I did. I thought that would just be a real smart thing to do. And so I popped that beer open and I was going to drink it. I didn't think alcohol froze, right? Well, 3.2% or whatever it was at the time. 3.2 was the alcohol content of beer in Colorado at that time. If you were 18 and older, I think 
you could buy 3.2 beer. You had to be 21 to buy beer that had, you know, more alcoholic content than that. Anyway, strange little rule, but that's what it was. Open that beer and it spewed everywhere. I'm getting ready to go to school. I'm in a freezy car and I've got a Coors Tallboy, which is what, like about 18 ounces. And all of the alcohol spewed out of that can all over my car, all over my clothes, probably all over books. I didn't have time to go back in and, and clean up and I really didn't really want to go back inside so that my parents could smell beer on me. So I just went to school smelling like alcohol, but I didn't drink anything because it was everywhere. So what I learned though was that when you freeze 3.2 beer, 3.2%, the alcohol will separate from the water. The water will freeze, the alcohol will will become more concentrated and the alcohol when you take the pressure off of it it will explosively decompress and blow everywhere so really there wasn't a lot of a lot of liquid that had blown all over the car but it did it did spew everywhere right got on everything it wasn't much it was 3.2 percent roughly of of 18 ounces. So let's say maybe about a half of an ounce or something like that, a quarter of an ounce, but it was pretty stinky. Anyway, and you know what? I needed to share that story. I needed to let you know about them. This mountain is a high point, by the way, of, of, of County Rule 17. I don't know what it's called, but it's a mountain over here on our left. I believe you can find it on Google Earth. We are headed south right now. We're gonna go south for a couple of miles and then we're gonna go southeast. We're gonna kind of meander around. I'm gonna get off of County Road 17 and I'm gonna go on to, I think it's 168. A really cool little County Road that is a seasonal road like a lot of these roads are out here. And I'm gonna there's some rocks out here that I'm interested in. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna grab a few of them if I can if I can find them so you know we're looking south at the mountains that bad. This one is so bad. <laughs> the people that know how to get out of the washboards, like me, which is you basically have to get off the damn road when the washboards are this bad, have been doing this for a long time. And that's why it's so rough even while I'm here off the side of the road. I really wish, well, okay, selfishly, I wish that, that Moffat County, Brown County, Jackson County, Larimer County, and all the other counties that I drive dirt roads through would keep the roads in better shape. Not only that, but Graham County and Eagle County, and probably Rio Blanco County. So that's pretty neat. The Amper River Valley is just ahead of us. Damn it. What? Washboards. So if you're not, if, you, if, you, if you've never driven on dirt roads, if you don't know what washboards are, 
That's what I'm avoiding. I'm avoiding these rotten freaking washboards that you they tear your car up. And the maintainer operators, the people that take care of the road, can't keep them from from reoccurring, but there are things that, that can be done that do help. One of the things that really helps is putting magnesium chloride on the road. It makes it almost like a paved road. It's amazing what it will do. It looked like this could have been, it's got some darker areas. It looks like maybe they did treat it with magnesium chloride at some point in time this year. But they certainly haven't, if they did at all, have they haven't in a long time. So the Yak River, it's really cool what it does. Let me just kind of show you this. Maybe I can show you the, the can, let's see how, how if I can get. So that mountain there is Juniper Mountain. And I'm going to have to back up real quick. There's a canyon on the right side of that mountain, which you might have seen just like a little indication of it. As this land was uplifting, this is what the geologists say, the Yampa River cut through that that batch, mainly limestone, cut right through that mountain and made a really cool canyon, Juniper Canyon. And it also did that further west, that Cross Mountain, and even further west, that Dinosaur National Monument, where the really big, really big canyons are, where Echo Park is and where the Green River and the Yampa River meet up out, out and far with northwestern Colorado. There are some hot springs in that area, and there are apparently some hot springs in the riverbed. Now, I don't know where they're at, but some of the locals that have been around here a while know where they're at. They know where the vents are. That's pretty cool. There was actually a silver mine over there in before 1880. Really hard to to um, pin a lot of this stuff down anymore, but there was a silver mine right next to the hot springs. There's a really good chance that a lot of the people that own that land out there today don't even know that mine existed. But it was a going concern for a while in the 1870s, 1880s. Anyway, we're still headed mainly south, dropping down into the Yam River Valley, which, like I said, runs mainly east and west through Wofford County. If I were to turn right, right here, that road is County Road 74, it will take me over to Juniper Hot Springs. Juniper Hot Springs used to be a resort town, or a resort. Town is probably strong. Um, it was a it was a hotel, and the people that had built it had made several several different pools of differing heat right but the springs were pretty hot so they had some springs or some pools that were really hot and then they basically went to a swimming pool which was warm i'm not really sure where they mixed well they had the Yampa river i guess they could pump water up from the Yampa river it's, it wasn't that far away the Yampa river is probably a hundred yards, I guess, north. So they could, they were at, there was access to water. Although you would pretty much need a pump to get it, you know, up, up to Juniper Hot Springs. But it was a tourist, desti tourist destination in the uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, I guess. When we moved here, I was a little kid in the 70s, late 70s, and the 
there were still a lot of buildings there. There were the major. Well, I think the motel was maybe there, the hotel, whatever. So there was a main building, but it soon thereafter was demolished. And it seems like there were these separate rooms that they had made for the hot springs, different places, you know, different temperature pools and private pools or whatever. Those lasted for maybe another 10 or 20 years. Then they were demolished. The only thing that's left out there is the old swimming pool. And some people, I think somebody from Georgia bought that property and they they had a like sort of an honor system for a while like if you go there you put five dollars in a in a can or something and you can hang out but i think there's someone that lives there now i believe that they there's not a house there or there wasn't last time i was by there which wasn't that long ago so they bring a trailer in and people live there in trailers bird did you see that maybe you did maybe you didn't so anyway and the upper river we did pass by the way that that bridge we were over was the upper river we're now on the south side of the upper river there's a little recreation area out here I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere it is mostly popular and pretty crowded during hunting season which is coming up in the fall that's hunting season right it's an interesting spot i didn't know this until a couple of years ago that in that over in that area the river does one of those big horseshoe curves in this canyon just a few miles from here, over over to our left, over to the north. And where the, imagine a horseshoe, at that closest part, you know, the edge of the horseshoe, at some point in time, for some reason, I'm sure a water control reason, there was a construction project, there was a, there was a shaft driven tunnel driven between those two points underneath this mesa I have no idea why they did that I do not get it but I can sort of see that area it's over to the left our left now I won't I won't show you that area because it takes it's a couple miles of a drive just to get into that area but they put a mile, it's about a mile long, this, this, this tunnel. I don't know why they did it. Maybe they were going to put a dam there. Maybe they were going to put a hydro station out there. Maybe they thought there was, I don't know why. I need to look in and figure out why, because I am curious about it. Let me see if I can point you into the direction of that area. So the recreational area is just a little campground, kind of a place to, to have, get access to the river, to get on the river or off the river, you know, go skip rocks or fish or whatever you might want to do. Uh, I've got to be careful that you can pull down this road and see if I can show it to you. Okay, out there where those trees are. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, that's that's basically that area. So I'm going to have to back up. Anyway, to get to it, there's a road that goes around that hill that's out there. That little hill, that low hill. It's about a two or three mile, two or three mile, a two mile drive into it off of this road. And then that big flat, that big flat mesa up there, that mountain, that's Duffy Mountain. But it's cut up by the Amber River, and it's really cool. And, uh, and that's where that horseshoe shape is. 
Why they put that tunnel in, I'm not sure. If it's flood control, if what? I maybe maybe it was a, a way to if there were dry years to catch you know catch a little bit of the water in the canyon like maybe it's somewhat of a reservoir i really don't know what what the reason was if anyone that watches my channel knows what that was out there for and i'm sure there are people that do know let me know i'm curious i don't think many people even know that exists i can probably count on one hand the number of people that I suspect knows that exists out here in Moffat County. And that's quite an undertaking, a mile long tunnel. I imagine that that campground was probably somewhat of a construction community while they were building that tunnel because you really wouldn't want to drive from Craig or Maybell out here to take you, you know, half an hour or so to get out here. I'm assuming on today's roads it would take you that long. Who knows what it would have taken you when they built that. And that could not have been done recently. That had to be, be done maybe in the latest, the 50s? Maybe. I can guarantee you these roads haven't improved. And we're catching them on. on you know, we're catching him in a really rough state right now. These washboards are really annoying. So anyway, that the hill that the, we just looked at, we're now on top of. And that little road going into that rec recreation area is just down on the other side of this hill. Of course, shooting off to the left. I realize that I don't talk that much about the local area. I thought today I'd stay more away from politics and just, just describe this area to, to people that, that don't understand this area, don't really know much about it. And where we're at, we're roughly a mile high everywhere we go around here, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. So this road will take us to that recreation area that goes off to our left. I am interested in some interesting rocks that I found out here. On this road, a 133, I thought it was 168. Why did I think that? 133, I should have known that. Now this is a seasonal road. The sign says no gravel and there's no maintenance on this road through most of the year. So this road is, you know, in snowy years, it's snow covered. Um, and it's, it's mainly a rancher road, I suppose, you know, what would call it. You wouldn't think that this country would be ranch country, but it actually is. And I, I'll have to get a little political here. Not that I want to, but because defending a position, people talk about how bad cows are, all the energy that it takes to to make produce a cow and make meat out of a cow, right? Well, cows are, I mean, that that's what they are. They're animals that, that are meant to feed other animals. If you look at what a cow is, whether that animal happens to be a person or a coyote or a wolf, or a bunch of birds or whatever they i mean that's just how nature works that's how cows go back to nature right and keeping in mind that people are carnivores we're omnivores that means we eat meat and we are geared for that we're set up for that we can eat anything but meat is the the most nutrient dense food that we have and if you don't eat meat if you're a vegan you have to supplement you have to supplement 
basically vitamin B, I think, is, is the, the, the main supplement that you need when you don't eat meat. So vegetarians and vegans who say, oh, well, you shouldn't eat meat are liars or they're just uninformed. You have got to have those nutrients that are found in meat. So when they say, oh, we don't need meat, no, that's not, that's untrue. Throughout history, we have needed meat. Now today you can get supplements to replace some of those, some of those, you know, components that you don't get into meat, you don't get in meat. And I would say, having been on the standard American diet for a while, that the more you rely on plants and on processed foods and on supplements, the less healthy you're going to be, the less well off you're going to be. I think you put yourself at, at, at severe risk. My, my evidence of that is that in the last century, diabetes, heart disease, um, mental disorders, skin cancer, several different things, yeah, and cancer in general, have, have basically exploded. I mean, if you look at it in the last hundred years, and what has changed, what the biggest change, what is the biggest change? Well, I'll tell you, the biggest change, and you probably know it, is the way that what we eat. We've gone from a, we've gone from a, like a meat and protein based society to a plant and processed food based society, diet. All over the world, not just here, you know, in most parts of the world. So, when you look at this ranch land and you think nothing could survive here, cows survive here, but the only reason that they survive is that they're able to move around and they can pick the food that they, you know, that, 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 that they need. And so a cow, during its life, uses its own energy and the energy that it gets from an area like this, which you wouldn't think would even support a cow, they're able to discern what they need and to get what they need out of this area. Now, ranchers will bring hay in and ranchers will bring water in and, you know, in, in the areas that they need to. And that is very sensible and makes a lot of sense. But to say that cows are somehow an incredibly expensive thing, right? And cows are animals, they're not things. But it's just a fallacy, another fallacy of the left. And I, it, it, I don't know, it, it's interesting that people, well, maybe people don't think about this stuff, come to their conclusions based on emotion, the fact that we eat cows and that to eat a cow, you have to kill a cow, slaughter a cow. And that's a kind of a horrible thought, especially if you like animals. And, 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 and guess what? Most ranchers like animals. Most people like animals. But we have to reconcile the idea that life is. And what do I mean by that? Life is the way life is. We can like it or we can hate it, but it doesn't change the way life is. Cows are meant to be eaten. Everything dies. The things that eat cows die. When those things that eat cows die, they also get eaten by other things. You know, maybe they're a, predator, a bigger predator. Maybe they're a smaller predator. Maybe they're a microbe. Maybe they're, you know, a host of whatever things, but that's the way the world works. And for, well, anyway, that's the way the world works. So a cow, or for that matter, a deer or an animal, or whatever creatures that live out here that are able to live out here, they're quite intelligent. They're able to make a living out here. The ranchers understand that, you know, they've got a feel for how much food is out here. So how much, how many acres can support how many creatures, right? And so they, they try to balance these things out and the cows live their lives doing what they do at some point. If they're meant for meat, they're gonna, you know, that's how they're gonna, that's what's gonna happen to them. But we all die. 
every one of us. I don't like it, and I don't actually like the idea of killing, but I do understand that eating meat is extremely important. And so the attack on meat is basically the attack on being healthy, and made by evil people and made by people that don't understand that the world works and the world work will continue to work exactly the way the world works in spite of their feelings. I have more to say about that, but I'm getting into the area where I'm finding some interesting rocks up here. So I'm shifting gears and I'm looking for some some interesting rocks. A few years ago, I set up a little lab, a tiny, tiny, tiny lab. And I, what I really want to do, I'm not trying to get rich finding valuable metals or minerals or, or material. I just want to know what the hell things are. Simply, that's it. Now, if I find something that, for, for instance, a rock that contains gold or nickel or titanium, whatever, that's interesting and that's neat. That doesn't mean that I'm going to drop everything and start a mine somewhere. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to either. It's just, I'm curious. And so, it, it's just a very cool thing to be able to explore this area like this. And I like geology. I'm an amateur geologist, not a professional. I don't know all that much. I know a tiny little bit about things. But what I, what I do know about this area is that there are some rocks here that are interesting to me. And so I'm investigating these rocks. This dirt that we are traveling on, by the way, is a mix of clay and silt and sand, clay being the finest form of all of that. And when it rains out here, this road will become impassable pretty quickly. So you really, it's, oh yeah, good. I see something that I like. It's really important to to pick the time, pick the day, and get on these roads when the road conditions are, are amenable for travel, or else you're gonna get stuck, or you're gonna turn your car into a gigantic muddy mess. So this is the area that I'm interested in up here. I'm going to guess that this is a rocky outcrop that has not has not harder than the your ground around it, and that's why it's high country right now. That the softer areas around it eroded away as water and wind, you know, did their thing out here. So I'll park up here and I'm going to go look for a little while. It's like the maintainer has been up here. This is pretty much, other than ranchers, people like me, and hunters, there's there's not a lot of, of people that get on the road like this, but this is a beautiful spot. Let me just show you how cool this is. This is high country. We're looking south at Kalawail coal mine. Yeah, let's just do this while I'm doing this. Okay, that... We're looking at Colorado Coal. There are a couple of mines out there. Let me try to do a panorama here. There's another mine over, over in that direction. It's a coal mine. Both of these are coal mines. That is, that is, those are the mountains that, I guess for lack of a better word, I don't know what they're actually called, like the mountain range, but that is where you would climb over Nine Mile and Wilson Creek basically directly ahead of us. 
and I think that's also part of the of the Grand Hogback. I believe this is that that those mountain ranges are the north side of the Grand Hogback. So, and we are on, like I said, a high spot. So now we are looking at Juniper Mountain. So we're looking pretty much, well, like northwest, I guess, and that's Juniper Mountain. That's the mountain that the Yampa River cut through. That's over the over by um, the Hot Springs and the old the silver mine out there. And there are some prospects, I think, up on up on Juniper Mountain. Then the area that we came from when we dropped down off of that hill, that ridge is basically out that way. And yeah, I know you have to kind of look at the top of the hill to see it. And then Duffy Mountain is that rocky ridge that you see all the way across here. Okay. And it goes all the way. Keep keeping going all the way to there. You can see over on the right side where it finally drops off. I can see a little tiny Union Wireless cellular tower up there. And for those of you that, that know the area a little bit, I'm now looking out at the flat tops. I'm looking at the flat tops and there are a couple of peaks that I can see out there. One of them I don't recognize the other one is Sleepy Cat. We're looking west or looking east right now. Let's see if I can focus in on Sleepy Cat. Yeah, I should. Sleepy Cat should be roughly in the middle of the screen, just a tiny little bump out there on the horizon underneath those clouds. Then the area we're looking at now is Yellow Jacket Pass, and we've been on that road that will take you into Meeker. And so now we're making our 360. Okay, we're backing back up. <laughs> okay. There we go. And we're back to Call a Wild Coal Company out there. So there we go. There's a 360 view, 360 degree view, inspired by my sister Sue, whose whose YouTube site is Woman at the Wheel, so you should watch it. But she she does cool things like that, so I'm just going to imitate her sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to get out. I'm going to take a quick look. I'll be back, and we'll continue on.